Hey everybody, it's Carolyn Bloom of Bloom Handmade Studio. So happy to be back on the channel here today to talk to you about all things um, embroidered, be it knits or crochet. I'm just gonna be touching briefly on embroidered knitting today, uh, just to say that yes, I am wearing the sweater that I embroidered, taking it from a rather plain piece into something that's a bit more reflective of my personality. As you can see, each sleeve has a different uh, motif to it. I did a fun little poll on Instagram to see which people preferred, and this side with the more intricate stitching did win out. I will probably redo this sleeve to have the same motif as this one, but for now, I've left them different just to make sure that um, this is the one I wanna choose. If you're interested in this sort of thing, I'll be teaching loads of classes um, on embroidering your knits and your crocheted pieces. If you're curious about that, you can find more information about the classes and where they're happening, currently entirely on Zoom. Uh, but I've been partnering with some really lovely folks, yarn shops and events to make this technique more well known. So you can find all of that on Bloom Handmade Studio under the header there on the top of, um, of the website called Where to Find Me. But today is really not meant to be about embroidered knitting. Today is meant to be all about embroidered crochet. And uh, very specifically, the Double the Fun embroidered cowl that I'll be releasing here in the next couple of weeks. I really enjoyed putting this cowl together and came up with the name Double the Fun, not just because it's a double wrap cowl, but also because you get to have some great fun crocheting the cowl, but then double that fun by embroidering it to make it truly reflective of um, who you are and your artistic bent. So let me just give you a little sneak peek here of what the cowl will look like. Got some ends here yet. As you can see, I haven't actually seamed this one together. It will be, it will be closed up, um, and it will be a cowl that you can wrap twice around your neck. As you can see, I have embroidered both sides to this piece. Um, my tendency is to go this route, working mostly with navy and white, black and white, navy and cream when I'm feeling really adventurous. But sometimes after a steady diet of that, it is so fun to let loose and pick a palette that is out of my comfort zone and a lot more bright and beautiful, like these colors here from Creo, K-R-A-E-O. Kristen is a dyer in Chicago who I've worked with before. She and I did a collaboration about a year and a half ago using her bulky weight uh, yarn for a hat that's called um, Deliberately Twisted. You could find that on my website as well. But we decided to get the band back together and work on this embroidered piece. This is a cowl that was crocheted with Kristen's um, anti-Afghan worsted weight, which I really loved working with. It has an incredible squish factor. Um, and one of the things that I loved about that base is that it lends itself beautifully to use any kind of yarn to do the embroidery. So on this side here, you can see I did some undulating waves. Um, these are all stitched using Creo single ply minis. Kristen put together this really beautiful kind of neon set. Talk about out of my comfort zone, but this beautiful neon set that when I saw it on her website, I said, oh, Kristen, that's what I really want to give a go with. So here's one side of the cowl, and then here's the other side. Um, you can see that this is featuring some of the stitch motifs you may have seen on Instagram if you follow me over there at Bloom Handmade Studio. Um, this is employing the reversible technique that I've come up with, and I think that the effect is really beautiful. What I'm going to show you how to do today on this video is how to put in this beautiful I-cord along the side of the cowl. The I-cord isn't just a 
way to elevate the ends and make your border look more beautiful. It's actually a special sauce ingredient, if you will, to working a reversible piece like this. You want a place to tuck away your ends so that one side doesn't have all of your ends kind of sticking out, marring your motifs. And that I-cord, believe it or not, is a perfect little tube to weave your ends through so that no one sees them. So there's loads of ends kind of buried away here in this side of the tube and then also at this end of the cowl. So I really loved working on this and I had a fantastic group of testers who are actually working on it right now. I'm recording this video uh, perhaps a little out of sync. I usually put these out right when the pattern's being released. But that crocheted applied eye cord was something that wasn't readily available on YouTube and it's rather difficult to describe in a pattern. So I wanted to record an introduction to the pattern but also give instructions for a three stitch crocheted applied eye cord which is what you need to finish off this cowl. So in this video, and if you want to hop right to those sections, um, they're all time stamped down in the show notes below. In this section, what I'm going to show you how to do is work all the way around your cowl um, using that crocheted applied eye cord. I'll tell you what to do when you get to your corner, tell you what to do when you get to your um, chain foundation. And then when you get back up to the beginning, show you how to pick up a third stitch to complete the tube. And when that's all said and done, we're also going to do some duplicate stitching to close up your cowl and your eye cord going all the way around it so that everything looks really neat and tidy. Now, one of the other things that I wanted to tell you about with this video that's also a part of this cowl is you may have noticed when I was holding it up earlier, I do have this extension piece to the cowl, which I've embroidered with the Sashiko persimmon flower stitch. The reason for this is that when I had finished with the embroidery for my cowl, what I discovered was that the length of it had shrunk by five inches. <laughs> so what I had really created was a fantastic neck brace. <laughs> it was too tight to wear. So it did sit in time out for a day or so as I cursed myself for having such tight tension with my embroidery. I've been doing this for nearly two years and couldn't believe that um, a seasoned veteran like me had made such a, a rookie mistake. But then I started to realize that if I do that and my anchor stitching and my further embroidery from there is too tight, well, that same thing might happen to you. And so what I've done in this pattern is I have designed it so that if you don't embroider it at all, this cowl will be ready to go, ready to wear in a perfectly wrappable, double wrappable way, and it will be a lovely accessory to grab, especially on days like today when we're still digging ourselves out of two feet of snow here in New York. So out of the box, off the page of the pattern, if you do no embroidery and you follow the gauge and you've got the right hook and the good yarn, um, you'll have a perfect cowl ready to go double wrapped. If, however, you do your embroidery and you find, like I did, that your piece shrinks, I have included instructions in the pattern on how to work this extension piece, turning lemons into lemonade, and providing you with a further canvas for some more embroidery. And so I was thrilled actually to have this extension because my Creo mini skein set was a five skein mini skein set and I didn't have anywhere to put this fantastic hot pink. And I was feeling kind of bad about that because I, I do love these four colors, but I really wanted to use all five. So perhaps this was actually meant to be. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to pick up your stitches from your crocheted applied eye cord and work that extension. And then when that's all said and done, I'm going to show you how to close up your cowl 
We'll stitch this up together so that you can see how to um, use a mattress stitch to close up your extension to the eye cord here that's on the opposite end of the cowl. So there are loads of things that we're gonna cover today in this tutorial. Um, and as I said, it's all time stamped down below. If you know how to do the eye cord and you wanna know just how to seam this thing up, well then just look through the show notes and hop right to it. If the crocheted eye cord is new to you though, I move at a, a fairly slow pace step-by-step step showing you how to work that technique because um, it's a little it's a little detailed fantastic to do but it's a little detailed and I don't want you to feel like you can't take this project on just because you haven't worked that for all of you knitters out there who want to give this a go I can't say enough about the simplistic nature to the crocheting that you'll need to do to create this underlying cowl so it's a perfect project to get started. If you're new to crochet, I've recorded a podcast earlier that you can find here um, called, I think it's the Crocheted Coaster that I use in all of the classes that I teach the embroidery technique on crochet with. You can follow along on that podcast and learn how to work what Americans call single crochet, just going back and forth um and the stitch count will be different of course because you're working on more stitches to make the cowl but you can get the idea of how to actually do the crochet i hold your hand through each and every step you can figure out how to work that crochet pick yourself up a new skill and um, be able to work a cowl like this now if you're like me and you prefer to work a knitted applied eye cord I've also recorded a podcast on how to work that technique also on my channel called um, the applied eye cord you can find that there and you'll work those stitches on your crocheted piece using knitting I'm going to include in here just showing how to pick up your stitches from the crocheted cowl just because that might be a little bit different um, but we're not going to actually dive deeply into how to apply the eye cord from there. So again, if you're a knitter and you prefer to knit the applied eye cord the way I did here for this sample, um, the technique is exactly the same. But if you check out those show notes, you'll see a timestamp where I tell you where um, you can find the directions for picking up the stitches from a crocheted, a crocheted cowl like this. Now, if you're interested in learning more about the motifs that I used, I'll be teaching these classes on um, embroidering crochet as well. I don't just do classes for embroidered knitting. I also do classes for embroidered crochet. You can find those as well on my website on the uh, main menu option where to find me. I have loads of these motifs that'll be for um, sale on my website. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to post them on Ravelry or not. Ravelry is kind of a stickler. They won't allow you to post tutorials. It has to be an actual finished piece. So stay tuned for whether or not things will be available over on Ravelry, but for sure you can find um, the motif patterns, the embroidery patterns on my website, which is again, bloomhandmadestudio.com. So without further ado, let's jump into that crocheted applied eye cord and all of the other finishing that you will need to have in order to create a cowl like this. To demonstrate how to crochet an applied eye cord, I've made a little swatch that is very similar to the stitch pattern that we used in the Double the Fun embroidered cowl. I'm going to finish my swatch by just carrying on across my final row using what Americans call single crochet. And I'm finishing my swatch as you will the cowl with my right side facing. You can tell it's the right side because this removable stitch marker is facing upward. At this point, we're now going to apply a three stitch crocheted eye cord. Rather than cut my yarn at this point, I'm going to chain three. So there's one, two, and three. In the second loop from my hook, 
second stitch right here. So skipping this one, going into this V right there, I'm going to insert my hook and draw up a loop. I'm going to repeat that in this V right here. So I'm inserting my hook and I'm drawing up a loop. Now, if you happen to have a smooth hook like I do, at this juncture, what you'll do is slide your stitches down to that end and put that first loop you come to onto a removable stitch marker, like so. If, however, you don't have a hook like mine, and in fact, I had a really lovely exchange with one of my testers where she recommended an ergonomic hook that wouldn't allow for that to easily happen. No worries. At this point, what you'll do, slide your, return your stitches down to this tip of your hook, pick up your darning needle, slide those first two stitches off of your hook, take the third stitch off, pick up your darning or your removable stitch marker and place that loop on it. You can then return those stitches to your hook and give your yarn a little tug if it needs it. Now at this point, you're going to turn your work over so the wrong side is facing. That may make no sense right now, but just trust me, turn your work over so now that removable stitch marker is facing downward. Insert your hook in the first stitch you come to on your cowl or in this instance your swatch, so right here in that hole. Go ahead and insert your hook and draw up a loop. And at this point, you can pick up your removal or your darning needle and once again, put those two stitches on it. Anchor your yarn and draw a loop up through that stitch right here. And now we're beginning our I cord. So rather than carrying on across our, our swatch or your cowl, you've now drawn a loop up through that first stitch. Return those two stitches to your crochet hook. Put your darning needle down and draw a loop up through both of those stitches at the same time. Now you only have two stitches on your hook. To get three again, you'll visit the next stitch on your swatch or your cowl, insert your hook, and draw up a loop. Now as before, go ahead and put those first two stitches closest to the tip of your crochet hook on your darning needle. You could really use anything you like, a crochet hook, Another crochet hook, knitting needles, cable needle. I just happen to have that darning needle handy. And as before, you'll pull a loop through that remaining stitch on your hook and then return the two stitches from whatever's holding them. In this instance, my darning needle. Return those to your crochet hook and pull your yarn through both of those stitches. And this is your repeat here. You add that third stitch, and as you get more comfortable, you may find that it's possible for you to just pinch tightly those two stitches between your middle finger and your thumb, rather than employ your darning needle. Just hold those two stitches tightly at their base, grab your yarn and pull it through, and then return those stitches to your hook. And that takes practice. I will tell you that Sometimes it doesn't go smoothly like that, didn't? The yarn got split, no worries. Just reposition it right back onto your hook. Grab your yarn and pull it through those two loops. Now you may say, oh, wait a minute, I thought we were working a three stitch I cord. We are, you just have to bear with me here. We're alternating toggling between three stitches here on your hook and two stitches on your hook but you're just going to repeat this across all of the stitches from your last row of crochet. And I really love this I cord for hiding my ends when I do embroidery. Let me just show you again, using your darning needle 
or cable needle or knitting needle, whatever you have handy to hold those stitches as you work the first loop. Sometimes it's a little pesky, it's fighting me here because I'm trying to record it. There we go. Pull that right through, then take those stitches off of your holder, return them to your hook, pull your yarn through those two. So as you can see, I'm a, I'm a little more fluid here, just pinching those stitches between middle finger and thumb. But you can play with it and decide whatever it is that you prefer, use that technique. And you're just gonna carry on doing it this way all the way across that last row of crochet, which is what I'm gonna do. And I'll meet you in the corner. I wanna show you what to do in the corner and then how to work down your cowl. So I'll meet you back over here. I've applied a two stitch, which will become a three stitch I cord all the way across that top row of my crochet. You can tell it's two stitches now because you have this pretty column of V's right here and another pretty column of V's right here. Trust me, there's a cute little trick here to make it three stitches that we'll do at the very end. But I wanna show you what to do once you reach this corner. You're going to return into that final stitch and pull up another loop just like you did before. You can either pinch the stitches and repeat the same steps as before or put those stitches on a holder and create another round of I cord. We're going to repeat that one more time. So going into the same stitch and drawing up a loop. I prefer to pinch at this point, draw my yarn through that last stitch on my hook, return these two stitches that I was pinching back to my hook and draw those through. So we've worked three stitches into the corner and that will give a nice rounded look to our cowl. Now we're going to work down the side of our sample. Your cowl will look just like this. And we're going to work that I cord into each row. So we're not skipping to here into that stitch. We're actually going here and drawing up a loop. Again, three stitches on our hook. Pinch the two closest to the tip grab your yarn, draw it through, return those two stitches to your hook, and pull a loop through both of them. Now we'll go into this stitch and draw up a loop. I'm going to pinch and hold. Just as I was doing before, I'm gonna repeat that across each of the stitches along the side here. Pull my yarn up through both of those loops. I'm gonna just repeat that down each of the stitches along the side of my piece. I'll meet you back here at this corner. I've worked my eye cord all the way along the side of my piece. And as before, I'm going to work three, a total of three stitches into this corner. I've worked my first one. I'm going to return into that same space, draw up a loop, pinch those stitches, pull my loop through, return those to my hook, and pull a loop through both at the same time. Let's do one more into that same space for a nice rounded corner. I've drawn a loop through, I'm pinching those stitches, I return them to my hook, and I draw a loop through. See, I'll just return and show you how nice that corner looks there. Isn't that nice and tidy? That's what we're gonna repeat all the way across these corners. Let me give myself some more yarn, okay. Now we're going to work across our cast on row. These are the chains that we created when we started our piece. You may see your slip knot right here. We're gonna skip over that and go into this V right here that's nestled next to our slip knot. 
You can probably guess what's going to happen. I'm going to put my hook right through and draw up a loop. It's going to sound very familiar. Take those stitches off and pull my loop through those, that last stitch and pull a loop through those stitches together. Find the next V, my beginning chain. Draw up a loop, pinch, and just keep working that I cord all the way along your cast on edge. So across into each of those V's that you chained, when you get back to this end here, you'll work three stitches, not into that last V, but rather into this hole right here. You see that? There's your last V. And it's into this hole. It's the last hole of the row of crochet. You'll work three I cords into that hole and then an I cord stitch or an I cord round into each of these stitches working your way up the side. And I'll meet you back up here next to our removable stitch marker. As you can see, I've worked all the way around my little swatch here with three I cord stitches in my corners. And I've come all the way back to where I began. I've worked one I cord stitch into this last corner. I'm gonna work two more. Pardon me, I'm going to work one more into that corner. So I pulled up a loop. I remove those two stitches. I grab my yarn, drag a loop through here. Return those stitches to my hook and pull a loop through both of them. So in this last corner stitch, just work two I cord stitches. Remove your hook and put those two stitches on a removable stitch marker like that. Don't cut your yarn though, not yet. Rotate your piece and find that hook that's on the first removable stitch marker. So here's where we just finished. I should close that, right? Here's where we just finished. I want you to turn your work and find that first chain. Remember that first chain that we put on a removable stitch marker? Go ahead and take that marker out. And place that stitch onto your hook. So it looks like that. Rotate your piece. And now we're going to turn what is currently a two stitch I cord into a three stitch I cord. And this is the fun part. You've, you've paid your price working that fiddly bit there to create the two stitch I cord. The third stitch is where you get to have some fun. We're going to come up our side of our swatch and grab this stitch right here and pull it allegedly pull it through that loop. So here I am, I'm grabbing this stitch. Let me just show you what we're looking at here. Not, not this stuff down here, it's this one that's attaching our swatch to our I cord. We're grabbing that and pulling it right through this loop that was on our removable stitch marker. We're gonna look up to the next stitch. Do you see this right here? It's that vertical line, horizontal line right here that's attaching our V's of our I cord to our swatch. We're going to grab that and pull it right through. And we're going to keep walking up the side of our swatch, creating this third stitch in our I cord. See what I mean about this being the fun part? And we're creating this wonderful tube along our edges that's going to be where we hide, hide all of our embroidery ends. The I cord is kind of the special sauce to any embroidered project. This is where you can make the piece reversible by not having your ends messing up your embroidery motif. All of your ends get tucked into this I cord.
going to grab one more <clears throat> and show you how beautiful the, this is. Let's take a moment's pause. Here's our right side facing. And now we have this beautiful three stitch I cord. This column of V's is your first stitch. This second column of V's is your second. And then here's the third. And I'm just gonna keep walking along the side of my I cord and adding these stitches by pulling up my loop. See, I'm in the corner here. I knew that I worked three I-cord rounds in the corner, so I have three stitches to add here. So here's my third. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up. And I'm just gonna repeat this all the way around my swatch. I'll meet you back over here, back over here where that other stitch marker is holding our stitches. I'm just gonna keep repeating, picking up these stitches and incorporating them into these loops all the way around. I've now worked all the way across my swatch and around the bend and now I'm back up to the last two ladders that I need to pull up to complete my three stitch applied I cord. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And now what we have here is a loop on my hook and two loops on my removable stitch marker. We are going to duplicate stitch those stitches to the first round of I cord stitches here along the top of our swatch. So let's go ahead and do that. To begin, cut your yarn. I don't know, you'll probably need say 12 inches or so, just to be on the safe side. Cut yourself a 12 inch tail and bring it across underneath the stitches on your removable stitch marker, across your, your piece and right next to the stitch that's on your crochet hook. From the right to the left, pull that yarn through the loop that's on your hook. And take your hook right out. Rock your piece up to find the first V, the first proper V of your applied I cord. For me, that's right here. Let me just show you what that looks like. These are the chains that you use to get started. Here is the first V. We're going to slide our darning needle under both legs of that V and pull our yarn through. We're going to return to the stitch that we just pulled off of our crochet hook. It's right here. You can kind of follow, trace your yarn right along. It's come through this hook or through this stitch up under those V legs. We're going to return to that stitch again from right to left and pull our yarn through. And that's our first duplicate stitch. We now need to duplicate, duplicate stitch this stitch, which is sadly the second on our removable stitch marker. So I'm gonna go ahead, actually it's not. This is good news, everybody. <laughs> I misspoke. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that stitch off of my removable stitch marker and put my darning needle right through it. One of my plies is twisted, so I'm gonna fix that. Okay, there we go, that's better. I've entered into that stitch from right to left, just as I did before. I'm gonna pull my yarn right through. I'm gonna rock back up to the top of my swatch and find the next column of V's. So here's the column of V's that I went into first Here's the V right next to that. I'm gonna grab it and go under both legs and pull that yarn right through. I'm going to return to that stitch that just came off my removable stitch marker. And again, right to left, pull my yarn through. You see what's happening here? Isn't it so pretty how it's creating this nice curved corner? I love it when things like this work out. 
Now I'm going to take that last stitch off of my removable stitch marker. You can sometimes just run your yarn right through it, then take it off. I've grabbed it. I'm going to come back up and find the last full V. Right here. I'm going to grab that. And pull my yarn right through, return to that stitch as before, and close it right off. And I've created this really nice corner that looks just as good as the other corners to my swatch, and it will look just as nice on your cowl. And let's test that theory that your ends can look terrific through a tube, an I-cord that's been applied, you can just start weaving that end that you've just duplicate stitched. You can just start weaving that right down the core of your tube. See what I'm doing here? I'm running my darning needle right down the center of it. And I'm gonna pull that end right through. And since this one's very important, I might just run it right back up the middle again, like this, the opposite way thereby making sure that it's really secure. Once you've done that, you can give it a little tug. See how nice and tidy that looks? And at this point, you can trim that right out. You can even come back to your cast on tail. Why not do the same thing? Weave it right into your tube as well. And this is what you'll do if you are adding any embroidery to the piece. This is where you'll tuck away all of your ends so that your cowl is reversible. And this one, you don't need to run it back and forth. You can just do it once since it's already pretty secure. I'm going to give it a little trim. Okay, so there's our nice little crocheted piece with an applied eye cord. I hope this was helpful. What I wanted to show you how to do today is pick up stitches along your applied eye cord and then work additional crochet this way, essentially 90 degrees opposite of how you worked your original cowl. So with your right side facing, and you can tell it's the right side, if you flip the cowl over, you'll see there's a little ridge of stitching that was created when you picked up the stitches to apply your eye cord. The right side is the side that has the smooth edge here. And what we're going to do is work into the second stitch of our three stitch eye cord. You can tell it's the second one by looking closely at your eye cord the V's, the column of V's that are closest to the right side, that's your first stitch. The middle column of V's is here, that's your second stitch. And your third stitch is here with the column facing your wrong side. So we're going to be working here into this ridge of stitches. To do so, what I'm going to do is slide my hook into the corner stitch here of my applied eye cord. Slide my stitch or my hook right through there, grab my yarn, and about four inches from the end, place the yarn over the hook of my needle, the end of my needle, and pull that right through. You can take your tail and run it parallel to your cowl, and then go ahead and anchor your yarn on your hand. Chain one stitch and then work one single crochet into that exact same stitch. Then we're gonna work into the stitch immediately to the left in that same column of these. And you'll notice that what I'm doing here is I'm holding my tail right on top of that column. And so when I'm working those single crochet stitches, my tail is being woven in at the same time. 
and I've worked four stitches here, what I'm going to do is work four crocheted sing single crochet stitches, then I'm going to skip a V. So let me pull my tail back so you can see what I'm talking about. Here I've worked my fourth stitch. I'm going to skip a stitch and go here. So I'm going to put my hook underneath that V. And continue to carry on working four stitches and skipping the fifth. Sometimes that happens, your hook comes right out. No worries, just hook it back in and carry on. So there I've done four, here's five. I'm gonna skip this stitch and go into the one after that. The reason why we skip that fifth stitch is to accommodate the difference between row and stitch gauge. We're effectively working into rows of single crochet which have a different gauge than stitches. So by skipping that fifth stitch, let's see how if I've gotten my four down. There's one, two, three, four. I've done four, so I'm gonna skip this stitch, skip that guy, and go right into here. And I'm gonna carry on working this exact same way all the way across all of my applied I cord stitches until I get to this corner over here. I'll meet you back there once I'm done. As you can see, I've worked across almost the entire row. I wove my tail in to about here, leaving a tail about that long that's easy to trim off. And now what I'm going to do is get into the corner. I've worked three stitches so far. I'm gonna work that fourth stitch skip this stitch and then go right into the corner here. And you can decide, you can play around a bit with how far into the corner you need to go. I, I think this is going to be fine. Play around with it. You might find that you want to go one stitch further to keep that edge looking nice and tidy, but I suspect that's going to be fine. If when we get started here, you need to rip it out and go over one more stitch to keep things nice and tidy and parallel to that I cord going this way, you can always do that. I've chained one. Now I'm going to turn my work over, anchor my yarn, and just carry on working back and forth the exact same way you did when you created your cowl. I'm going to add, I don't know, probably four or five inches of length here. And then once I've finished, I'll come back on and show you how to attach these new rows of single crochet to the opposite end of the cowl, sewing this into the applied eye cord. The next thing I'd like to show you how to do is how to seam your cowl together. For my sample, I'm actually going to be showing you how to seam an extension to the opposite side of the cowl. If you didn't have to add an extension, you'll follow these exact same steps, but you'll be working on seaming together your eye cords. You'll do the exact same things, seaming together the middle column of your eye cords together. And remember, you can find that middle column by just Looking at your eye cord carefully, find the column of V's close to the wrong side of your cowl. The next column of V's at your second stitch, that's the one you want to be seaming underneath. And then there will be a third column of V's right here. So you'll just work on mattress stitching together the middle column of your V's of your eye cords. Whereas if you've added an extension, we're just going to be working on this pretty row of V's that we created with our last row of crochet. So to do this, I like to fold one side of my piece that I need to seam together in half and find that middle stitch. I like to put a removable stitch marker into that middle stitch and then find the quarter mark of my piece. So I fold this edge to the middle and find the stitch that is the, at the one quarter mark and place a marker there, also not closing it. Let's find the three-quarter stitch, 
by folding that edge into the middle and marking that stitch also with a removable stitch marker. And don't close it. Let's repeat the same thing here. Let's find the middle stitch to the piece that we're going to be sewing that to. That's right here. So let's take our middle stitch marker and put them together. Let's find the quarter stitch by folding that edge to the middle. Put that marker through quarter to quarter and let's repeat it one more time here at the three quarter side. Fold that edge in. That's your three quarter mark. Go ahead and join it to your last marker. And what we've done here is now we've divided our edges into quarters so that we can make sure that we're not going to have <laughs> this tragedy happen where you've seamed all the way across and you've got seven extra stitches on one side or another. You can check yourself at the quarter marks and make sure that everything is moving along just the way you want. Now I happen to have a bit of yarn here left over from my last row of crochet. If you don't have that, don't worry. Just take a new piece of yarn. I would prefer probably for you to use your main color. Your mattress stitch that we're going to do here will get pretty much lost, so if you don't have any more of that, don't worry. Just grab something similar in hue. We're going to begin by stitching underneath the corner stitch in the middle column of our I cord, which for me is right here. I'm going to pull that right through, my end right through, and take a step over one stitch to the left. Pull that yarn through. I'm going to return to the first stitch on my extension. Pull my yarn through that. Take a step to the left and return under the stitch that I just left on my opposing piece. Stitch to the left and return from whence you came. We're making, essentially, I, I think of it as W stitches. So like making Ws, we're rocking back and forth. Take a step to the left, go back underneath the V that you came from. And that's my center stitch of my I cord. One stitch to the left. And come back to the same stitch you were under. You see how you do this? You just keep going all the way across. And you can check yourself periodically and make sure that you don't have one too many stitches on one piece or another. And if you do, so let's see, I have one, two, three V's here and one, two, three, four V's on this side. This is where doing those marker placements can really help. Rather than returning to the stitch that I just came from, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead and go into the stitch one to the left. And then resume going into every back and forth into the stitch I just came from. And just by checking yourself against those markers, you can tell that you're using up your stitches at a great pace and it'll keep everything looking nice and neat as you do this seaming. And I'm just going to carry on all the way across all of these stitches and I'll show you what it looks like when I get over to here, to this other side. All right, here I am almost finished with my whip stitching or my mattress stitching, excuse me, of my ends together to make this a cowl, a double wrap cowl. This is very exciting, the moment of truth as I'm getting to that final stitch here on both sides. I'm just going to go ahead and go through that last turning chain and back up again. And that looks, I think that looks pretty neat here. I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to now take, <clears throat> take my end and take advantage of that beautiful I cord that we created and run that end straight up the middle of the I cord like this.
Take it up this way, probably a few more stitches. Give it a little tug. <clears throat> I'll go just a little bit further and then turn around and come back that opposite direction just to make sure it's really quite snugly placed in there. So here I am, I'm just gonna skip over one rung of my eye cord and come back the opposite direction and really close things off nice and neat. Now, if you happen to have an end the way I do right here, or if you really like the idea of this and you wanna do a little bit of additional zhuzhing, if you've made it through the video this far, I'm gonna just do a quick demonstration of how to whip stitch either your seamed stitches here from your mattress stitch, or you can do this along your eye cord the way I have here. So I'm gonna just do a little bonus demonstration of how to add detail of a whip stitch. I'm just gonna go ahead and run it right down the middle of this pretty little seam that I created. So I've come up to one side, I'm going to skip a V and go underneath the V on top of that. I'm going to skip a V on top of the V I just exited from. So here's where I came out. I'm gonna skip this V and go underneath this one. And I find that this is the right interval for me. I like this look. You could do this under every third stitch, skip two stitches in between, or every other stitch you could do, but I happen to like to go under this stitch, skip one stitch, and then go underneath the one on top like that. And I just think this adds such a pretty little effect and adds some pizzazz to what is really evolving into a really beautiful piece. So there's your mattress stitch. I hope that helped. The next thing I wanted to show you is how I am addressing this little problem area right here in my cowl. Just to get you oriented, on this side of the ridge, this is the original part that I had crocheted. And because my added embroidery caused the cowl to shrink by a galling five inches, um, it wasn't long, long enough to be wearable. So I've designed and added into the pattern what I've, I've been calling my escape hatch here. This is adding those additional five inches that I needed to make the piece wearable. And what I did to work this is I just picked up stitches and crocheted them along the ridge here. This is that I cord that I had applied. And I picked up some stitches from that I cord and I added this extra length. But as a result of that, let me just zoom in here a bit. All of those ends that I had woven into the I cord are now visible in a really unattractive kind of Frankenstein sort of way. So I've invented a little stitch here to close that up and keep things looking nice and tidy. And I thought I would just demonstrate that for you right now. To give you a perspective of where we are, these legs right here are the crocheted legs of the first row that I was working. And this V column right here, that is the applied I cord stitching. And what we're gonna do is hide all of those little ends that were a part of the I cord. And I've started the process from here. I'm working with an end from some of the stitching that I had done here. This is the Sashiko pers Persimmon Flower Stitch, which I just love how that turned out. But I'm basically just using the long end from some of that stitching to close these stitches up. So I've gone underneath one, of, one pair of my crochet legs right here. That's where I just came out. And now I'm gonna go back underneath one of the V's of my I cord. I'm gonna rock back up to here, underneath the V stitch right on top of it. 
stitch through that, and you'll find it's not a one-to-one -one ratio between I-cord V and crochet stitch. So I'm not going to be able to tell you, oh, it's a two-to-one ratio, but when you've gone from one V stitch to the next, just look at whatever crochet legs are available to you. And sometimes, like I am right now, you'll go underneath that same set of crochet legs to close that gap right up. You can give a little tug if you like. In fact, it's rather satisfying to give a little tug and see all those stitches fall into line. Now I'm going to return to the V stitch of my I cord that I had just come from underneath. I'm going to go back under that, travel up one more stitch of my I cord underneath it, and give that a little tug. And you see how my my yarn is just basically falling right underneath the legs of my crochet telling me, go here, Carolyn. I'm going to listen to those stitches and just go right up and underneath that. And you can even tell which I cord stitches you want to go under. See how this one's at an angle right here? Let's straighten that guy out by going underneath it. And then come right up and underneath the one on top. This is a little bit of dealer's choice. I think I'm going to go back under those same crochet legs. I'm just tidying up that seam nicely. And I'll go underneath my I cord. And if you can't tell where you are, which is your next stitch, just turn that I cord ridge over and it'll make it pretty obvious where you need to go. You see what's happening here? Those stitches that were visible, those ends, I mean, that were visible in that Frankenstein sort of way, they're getting buried because I'm pulling the distance um, taut here between I-cord stitching and crochet stitching and just hiding them all away. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move into fast forward mode. Now that you've kind of got the hang of it, let me just move into fast forward and I'll see you at the end. Here's that finished ridge all closed up nice and tidy. I think that looks so much neater than it did before with all of the ends visible between the I cord and that first leg of crochet. don't want knitters to feel left out of this applied eye cord party. If you are a knitter and you've given this project a go and you've finished with your crocheted cowl and you want to know how to get started with that knitted applied eye cord, I wanted to just demonstrate that here on a crocheted piece so that you can get your bearings about you. What I've done here to get started is I have the right side of my swatch, this is um, a small version of your cowl, the right side is facing me. And I know it's the right size side because the pattern calls for you to put a little removable stitch marker in that second row when the right side is facing. With size eight crochet, or knitting needles, the piece was actually crocheted using a J hook, which is a six millimeter hook. I've gone down one needle size to a size eight, US size eight, which is a five millimeter knitting needle to do this applied I cord. You'll want something that is 32 inches in length in order to pick up all of these stitches. Um, of course, there's not that many here because this is just a swatch, but the long side of your cowl will have a lot of stitches. So a 32 inch size eight knitting needle is what I would recommend. If you have a 32 inch size seven needle, give that a try before you go out and get a size eight. That might work just fine. Likewise, if you have a size nine, you could give that a try. For me, for the sample that I made, I found the eight to be just right. Um, the knitting being um, a, hair, a hair different in tension and gauge than my crochet. So that's why I went down one needle size. Now to get started picking up my stitches, 
what I've done here is I've just placed my knitting needle through that first stitch of the last row of my crochet. I've put the tip through, I've rocked under that stitch and found my yarn and I've pulled this up. And this is just a waist yarn that I happen to have lying here. This is um, a DK weight that's in a similar color. You don't have to use um, a DK weight. You can use whatever you have. I do recommend something similar in color to the piece that you used or to the yarn that you used to crochet your cowl. So just reach underneath that first stitch of your last row of crochet and pull up a loop. And then go into each and every stitch after that and pick up a loop and pull it through like this. You'll get your groove going pretty quickly here. It's really just a matter of seeing your crochet stitches like you would the edge of your knitting. So this, this may look similar to picking up something from a cast off edge a bound off edge or a cast on edge, those V's of your last row of crochet are what you're shooting for here. Each, each stitch, you're pulling a loop through each stitch. And here we are pretty much to the corner. When you work that applied I cord and you get to the corner, please work two stitches that aren't attached two extra I-cord rounds so that you round off that corner, keeping things looking nice and tidy. Once you've worked those additional two rounds with your I-cord, you'll keep on going. I prefer actually to work all of these stitches with my I-cord and then pick up my stitches on the next side. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I just wanna show you that you'll be picking stitches up in each row of your crochet. So a stitch would be picked up here and in this hole and the one after that, all the way down the side. So you can really um, visualize what you're going to be doing here as you knit the applied I cord on. <clears throat> I prefer to knit the applied I cord than to crochet the applied I cord. If you want to give the knitted um, I cord a try, if you're a crocheter and feeling adventurous, I did record a podcast on the basic steps to do that. You can find that on my channel. It was a few episodes ago. Um, that would be helpful to show you how to um, knit the I cord from here. But this was just a quick, a quick little demo to show you how to pick your stitches up onto your knitting needle so that you can apply the I cord from this point. Okay, everybody, I hope that video proved to be helpful for you. As you can see, I'm actually wearing the finished piece. This is the first sample I ever made of this pattern. And I did this one a little while ago, maybe over the summer when it was a lot warmer than it is today. Uh, this is actually crocheted using Blue Sky Extra, which is a heavier weight of yarn. This is an Aran weight from Blue Sky Fibers. Um, and the pattern is written for the Creo Anti-Afghan, but I did create something similar to it over the summer using um, Lace Weight Held Triple to do all of my embroidery. So I encourage you to pilfer through your leftovers. You might have some bits and bobs from previous projects. This lace weight was actually left over from a collaboration that I did with Marion of Marionated Yarns. Um, I just love Marion's gradient sets. So I think maybe if you look closer, you can kind of see that the colors shift from darker to lighter along here. And then there are two motifs on this piece as well. And as I said, I, I kind of tend toward the blues and the creams. So this is a little bit more within my wheelhouse, but you can tell that that double nature, double the fun um, qualities to this cowl also exist. I did include a little extension piece on this as well. I should have known that um, I'm just a tight embroiderer. What can I say? But you can turn those extensions into really beautiful pieces. You can tell that the 
striping that I did along here is also taking advantage of that gradient. Um, so you can play around with the yarns that you have. You can look into those fantastic mini skeins that you may have accumulated. You could check out that Creo website, that marinated yarns website, um, and perhaps find something very special to create your own customized cowl. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up um, down below or leave me a comment. Let me know um, that it helped you out. And if you want, you can always find out the latest goings on in the studio by following me over on Instagram at Bloom Handmade Studio or subscribing to my newsletter over on my website, bloomhandmadestudio.com. I promise you I won't flog your mailbox. I'm, if anything, a little light in sending those things out. But if you want to know the latest things that are going on with me and my embroidery, my knitting, my crochet, the photography and whatnot, um, by all means, sign up for that newsletter. That's also where I usually put out my testing calls. I had wonderful testers for this pattern. Um, couldn't have done it without them. And so if you'd like to be a part of that process, uh, sign up for the newsletter, or you can even send me uh, an email to carolyn at bloomhandmadestudio.com. All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'll hopefully see you soon. Take care.